Now we're recording. Okay, I'll just quickly welcome everybody again. This is writing in the margins <laughs> with web spinning. Um, and now I've started recording. Our first piece today is going to be from Pat McCarthy. I will mute myself. I will bring up Pat's piece and ask him just to read it for us. So here we go. Okay, has that come up on your screen? Yep. Great. So go ahead, Pat, whenever you like. Okay, Pat. Uh, Sorry. That's, me. that's yeah. me getting on muted. I think yeah. Pat needs a separate invite. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find where's Pat gone. Oh, I think we've lost Pat. <laughs> oh, hang on. He's, he's in the waiting room. There we go. <laughs> this is absolutely classic Zoom meeting. So thank you everyone for your patience. Okay, let's just give him a moment. Okay. That's it. Oh, sorry, Pat. Uh, that's a, a classic start to a Zoom event. <laughs> press, I press the wrong button too. Oh, the, I'm glad it wasn't just my fault. Okay. So, have you got the text up on your screen there, Pat? And it's brilliant. And okay. Yeah, so, so, whenever yeah. you're ready, then you can go ahead. Yeah. Welcome. Just deleted a huge amount of words as was negative and self-punishing. I looked at how society treats us. <clears throat> and now, but that's their business, not mine. No, I'm just positive, fun writer, self-indulgent, and how good I am. I just got awarded prize from Donegal Local Development. Even better, took, even better, look up my name, Pat McCarthy, Ballantubber. <clears throat> this is so easy. Just write positive CV about yourself. You write only, no one else. The most challenging thing for me is putting quilt cover on. It's like a Rubik's Cube for me. I, the younger people, it's a novel toy. First challenge, I put quilt cover over my head to try to bring in quilt under cover. Didn't work. Next, put quilt cover inside out, put quilt cover over. Didn't work. Took end quilt to end to cover inside. Didn't work. I just gave up. Bought sleeping bag. Defo got sleep that night. <laughs> Thank you so thank, much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, Pat. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll do one big round of applause for everybody at the end, I think. Um, otherwise, I'll be muting unmute and unmuting. And Lord knows what other buttons I might press by accident. But thank you so much for that, Pat. Um, that's My just pleasure. brilliant. So I'll just mute you again. Thank you for reading that for us. So next up we will have ross uh here we go um here comes ross hi guys <laughs> hi ross how are you doing yeah good I'm good fine. good okay so i'll bring up your piece and it'll be great to 
here are you reading it it's a bit of a longer piece yeah um so um i'd um i'd uh i'd uh, just like to make it er, er, everyone aware before i start that um i have a speech in, in, in Edmund, so it might i i take it maybe longer to read the Irish, but um sure look that's um, correct so whenever you're ready there ross you just crack on a vita bella. The living room was too clean for Emma. The smell of bleach and all all this wet into her nose. The the old ornaments were too neat to it 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 and the floor almost have shot up. It looked as if no one had ever walked in it. He, he, he even parked in a little corner of the room while her father busied himself with the hoovering. Is there? Is there really a need to Hoover? She said, but echoing over the, the sound of the machine. Yeah, yeah, yes. Her fa, her fa, oh, her fa, oh, Arthur shows back. Or, or me, for me, it, for me, it's for Elton. She, uh, she, she saw him wheeze and puff. His back must be in agony. She thought. He, she ha 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 hated seeing him like this. His, his physical decline becoming more apparent with each pa pa passing day. It may ate her on the screen sometimes. He was already worse. If he wasn't worried about his own health, he was were or 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 if she if if she was hot if she if she he was cold if she had had enough to eat she couldn't go outside without him not even down to the corner shop a few meters away it was just as the two of them in a large vast house hence why she needed the the personal assistant. Where at this full or or of support, she would be a, 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 able to leave the house with no questions asked. Let if life on on on, on her own terms, without fe feeling like she was putting her father out. The, this was the reason why the house is being hoovered. Why her father Father other was breaking out the good biscuits and the sweetest chocolate. Why Emma had had her first shower in a in a fort night. Everything was for Mr. Elton. Of course, it hadn't been easy to get a hold of Mr. Elton. Whenever Emma rang, so 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 ocean services had to go through the same rigmarole. The, the person on the on the other end of the line not mm -hmm. understanding her, having to state her name again and again, being transferred from per, per person to person, and having to hear this same tedious rendition of Beethoven's <laughs> Elsa, while, 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 she, while, while she was kept on home. No. Oh, 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 only to have some person on the other end of the line say to her in a bored one to he's, oh, he's away to me eating it at the moment. Can I take a message? He had left him five. Oh, sorry. <sighs> but now the day was finally here. The blessed, the blessed 
the blessed man is taking a day out out of his sky. I I I I I I I I I her journey to an independent life could finally begin. He he was due to come to. She uh, uh, snapped out to the uh, 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 the clock on the my antipathies. It was all the all all the all 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 the minute in it to you. And I waited. Every time a car ran past, she hung her breath as if she were as a young woman about to meet her. Her, her suitor. But five minutes passed, and there was still no sign of Mr. Elton. And my panic panicked, and something happened. Had, had he cancelled last minute? Emma went in to check her email. No, he hadn't sent her a message. He hadn't forgotten. Ha, ha, had he? She, she closed her eyes and pinched the braid edge out of her nose. She couldn't bear the thought of hearing Elsa again. Finally, she saw a white mini pull up in her driveway and someone uh, approaching the house. The doorbell let out of a piercing shriek. Her, her, fa her father made his way to the door. Hello, a two. A true evil voice said, please, please come in, her, her father said. In came a well-dressed man with a messenger bag on his shoulder. He was young with blushing, puffy red cheeks, groomed black hair, and shiny white teeth. He wore a black pullover over with his ocean Sir Irvis's lanyard right on his neck. At least, at least he's around my age. Emma thought he might be in with a chance. P please excuse the, the state aid of the house. Her, her, fa her, her father said, Oh, no, it's fine, the man said, chuckling slightly. He turned around and caught and caught her uh, and caught and caught, oh, and caught her stare, staring at her. Mm, mm, nice to meet you, Emma. He he said, his um, white teeth glistening. Mister Alton, please call me. <laughs> He said, sound out of the fine and appears if he were as a frog catching a fly. He gave her a wooden handshake. I um I like your your weak eels, he said, smiling. They're they're are very very nice. Thank you, she said, so I'm more confused. I like them too. She watched his cherry head bob up and down in, in agreement. Good, good, he said. Get everything on the other one of those. To the smart uh, uh, I, I, Emma found out as, as if there was a show coming into the room. She, she breathed a sigh of relief when and her father arrived with tea and biscuits. In case you fought, I didn't see anything, her fa father said. Oh no, I'm, I'm trying to be good, Mr. Elton said, but uh, actually, but um, anyway, let's get crap. I can. He, he took out the pen and notepad from his bag. The notepad was covered in palm trees. So, tell me about how we can help you. 
tell me about your your or day your daily routine. Her father was so I I did the story of their lives. How Emma had been born had been born with it's a with it's an impairment. How how they a, ha, had been pro, pro, honest on the support. How they had slept through the cracks. He explained how he didn't know how he could go on, how stressed he was. <laughs> his his health problem. Where it must have out and adding a breathy. Yes, or so talking at various intervals. Emma sat in silence. She, she was she was used to the story. It was it was her life, but but hearing it laid out like that only shocked her. And for a while. She would sit in a room, stunned that she actually put up with this, that she accepted this. That, and she accepted being stuck in the house. That she, that, and she accepted only showering what, 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 once a fortnight. That, and she accepted that her own sense of self was stunted. She started Mr. Alton's face to gauge his reaction, but she couldn't glean anything from him. He'd be happy if he felt anything. Shock, pity, or a sense of sadistic horror. It'd be better than the dull, immovable faces of some of the people in the clinic who had heard this story before and only replied with an un in trusted side. What on earth other finished Mr. Elton um, sipped his tea utterly sloshing it in his mouth. Well, it seems like you've been through the ringer and the very so or, or, or that you had to go through that, he said. They will not ask me. Right, I writing something down in his notebook. I'm sure, Emma, that you must be awfully impacted. He, he turned to him, palm resting on, on the tip of the pen, and gave her another other one of those clip on. Smiles. Yes, it's really hard. I mean, I feel like I don't have my own life. I can't go out and my friends or go to the cinema and I won't. She stopped. She he was cut. She was casting back her mind to a talk she had intent. She had attended and. College last week, and spending some time in Italy as an English teacher. A young man, a recent graduate of her own department, impressed on them how fun it was, and showed them pictures of his travels in between the informational slides that made up his tour. There was a buzz in the room. Said, I said, any answer on, on the young people that the world was their oyster, theirs for the taking. I see. Is there out in these? So you'd like to do that, yes? You made an, another other, 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 other note. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I feel like at the moment I'm just existing. I feel like at the VA I could actually live my life, go on ho holiday, even. Oh, where air to Italy? Oh, do you speak Italian? Um. 
Yeah, um, yes. Do you? He laughed. Oh, I, I, I know. I'm, I know. I think you for phrase Carlos Bozo. She, she smiled. I, I, I remember. Dear husband. That's it. He, he, he said, as if she had been. In the one to claim she only knew a few phrases. Emma, w Emma watched him reach for another other Swiss chocolate. They waited as he let Italy onto the rocker and chewed the sweet. So when can we get when can we get the ball run? Um, rolling on this. Mm -hmm. Held up his hand to signal they were so e e e e eating. Well, the ends of his mouth curled into an awful saccharine expression. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that we wouldn't be, a that we wouldn't be able to fund the PA a for you, for for you to go out. He said simply. Fun of the ones is. But every time, so we really need to well, prioritize more basic care needs. I can see about getting in some home care help. Some some almond help get you dressed, get you showered. Would that be nice? Might give you a view of more dignity. Paul's. His words were like a punch in the stomach. She felt a tightness in her throat as if she was about to choke. Dignity. There was no dignity in her existence. Only being showered once a fortnight, being forever relegated to the back of the house, stripped of the right to live her own life in private. How was that? Dignity. What tears were forming in the back of her eyes? I should she cry. On the one hand, it would, it would, it would only demit any, 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 any in his, his eyes. She would look like a poor, pathetic child. Um, sad, sad that, 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 that she can have an uh, uh, ice cream, but then again, if, if she did turn on the, wo the wo 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 waterworks, it might play in, 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 into his paternity and he might take pity on her. Maybe work on her behalf a bit more because he he had a soft spot for her. No, she would say nothing. She wouldn't give him the pleasure of feeling pity for him. <clears throat> and if uh, something was to happen to me, her father in inquired. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you'd um, have to put her in a, in a, in a nursing home. My Mr. Elton said, Cooling, that the room was silent for a few minutes. I mean, of course, of course, of course, one try to avoid that happening. He said, Cheer, cheer, if I'm. Emma stared at him. She was trying to resist the urge to lash out at him, to scream at him, to wipe that smug look off his face. She was dumbfounded that the key to her life, the key to her own future, lay in the hands of this idiot. He had no understanding of his job, of how important he was, that to some of his clients, he was the capricious god that they had to worship and appease in order to survive from day to day. Still, she thought, me. Maybe he doesn't have much 
experience. Perhaps his only contact with the Israeli was seeing ads for disabled charities on television. Images of needy children whose lives could only be improved by his generous donation. He, he might have put some spare change in, in the book on Grafton Street, or sat patiently through some say, a, 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 able child's performance of a Christmas class. Because bless, in the end, maybe it wasn't his, his fault. He thought the way he did. How could things be any di any different if he never saw anything else? Well, I better be off. He said, "Giving up loads to do." That thank you for all your time," her father said, shaking. Here's him. Mr. Elton looked at them. He offered her his hand for her to shake. I will continue to advocate for you to have her personal assistance. Lee, um, leave it with me. She stretched out her hand. Thank you. It, 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 she, she said nothing wrong. I'll be in touch as soon as I can. Arrive, arrive, dirty Emma. Her, her, her father walked him out to come. Emma stood in the, the doorway and watched him. The sun was beating down, and there was a gentle breeze. In the, air. the birds were singing. It was so hot; it was like a scene from the continent. Emma stared at him, talking to her father, clutching his palm tree notebook, and she wondered where had he bought it. She imagined him coming up out of a little shop in some European city with a book under his arm. He waved to someone standing in the square. Maybe a girlfriend. And they went for ice cream or pizza. They enjoyed life's pleasures. As Philip Elton backed out of her driveway and drove off into the distance, and the hopes that he might help her do the same. Sorry, are you? Yeah. So, Cassie, which piece would you like to read first? Sorry, I think I was muted for a lot of that, was I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a big thank you to Ross and then me talking to myself as I tried to find the right buttons. <laughs> so, <laughs> next up we have Cathy O'Leary. Um, so, Cathy has two pieces for us. Um, which would you like to start with, Cathy? Blue Days. With Blue Days. Okay, so uh, I will start sharing that. 
Um, and are you okay for reading it yourself? So far, the dogs are quiet, so it should be okay. Okay. <laughs> they start going on away. Okay. okay. Um, just a second now, and I'll find. You said blue days. Here we go. Okay. So now is let's just do that. Oh, sorry. So um, is that visible for you, Kathy? Okay, excellent. So I'll just mute myself and let you get on with it. Okay. Blue days. The heat in the rain. Oh. No, that's not start. Sorry. Keep going. Oh no, is that the same? Oh no, maybe that is. Oh yes, that's sorry, that's sorry. <laughs> I only finished writing this piece. Um, starting off on the wrong foot, when your soul feels as black as soot, attempt as you might, like expend every last ounce of energy left to not be in under dark black cloud. Oh, why, dear neuro neurological brain, can you not create more clarity of thought? Do not respond hastily in the spur of the moment, holding my tongue until clarity returns. If only life was a simple. Why is this so difficult to maintain? sustainability of mental health, no matter how hard you work, can be so unbelievably crippling. The trees, the birds, the bees and the flowers all resonate beauty and gentleness. O oh cloud, O oh dark cloud, go away not to return another day. O oh chemical imbalance in my brain, remind me that during the bad days that even this is temporary. Knowing that nothing lasts forever, everything is temporal, acceptance is a necessity. Above all, forgiving oneself is of utmost importance. Beholding a sense of humor isn't always easy and at times near impossible. However, life without satire would be very tragic. I've done it again, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Cathy. Um, would you like to say something about the artwork that accompanies the piece, just while I line up your next piece? Sure, um, that was um, the name, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> um, but that was originally done, I started with a drawing, hand drawing, and then I digitally edited it in Photoshop and I put layers to it. And it was uh, it, it was part of the Texas species of Ireland, and I was I did a whole series of drawings of, of flora and fauna, which I think is the name there. Um, and yeah, so we're looking at you know our native species and how can we protect them. Thanks, Kathy. So here's your next piece now. Uh, mother. Generations learning to live with each other, the stress, fear, trauma, hurt, to let go of, surrender and release to. So we can move forward. Dreaming, loving, sharing, caring, laughing, to get reunited. Grounded to the very core of our being. Understanding and compassion, gratitude and kindness to heal the wounds of our ancestors. We take flight with the wildness of our souls and soar. Embracing an acceptance of what is. Like the spirit of the hen harrier hovering from a distance for its eye view. 
playful abundance of childhood experience. Seeing, hearing, sensing, co-creating, leaving, remembering, and achieving. Thank you so much, Cathy. Um, and thank you again. Do you want to say anything about the art that went with that piece? Um, that was Rowan. Um, again, some with hand drawing, and then I work in Photoshop and I create these different layers. And um, looking at the, the native tree species as well. That's lovely. Listen, thank you so much for sharing that, Cathy. And great to have some of your artwork there um, along you. with your piece. So uh, the next up uh, we have, sorry, I know my face is not in the screen here because I'm leaning over to <laughs> look at the participants list. At least I'm not muted this time. <laughs> um, so next up, I'm just going to mute you there, Cathy, sorry. Um, we have Niall Jordan and he has a story for us. Oh, sorry, Mary. <laughs> I put you in the spotlight there by accident. Uh, sorry, Niall. Here we go. I don't mind sharing the spotlight with you. <laughs> Great company. It is indeed. So um, Niall has got a story for us. Um, so I don't know if you want to uh, say anything about it. I'll just bring it up on the screen share here. Okay. Chance to pop up. Um, hang on, it's disappeared <coughs> off my screen. There we go. Okay. So this piece is called You and I. It was originally written as part of an LGBTI workshop I was working in, but as I started to work on this piece, I felt it was more appropriate to work on what the margin part of it all meant. So it's still very much a work in progress. So I'll start now. You and I. It's not often I get a moment alone out here. So imagine my surprise as you, of all people, show up to actually use your locker. It's been part of my routine for months now to wait out the hustle and bustle of other guys jostling against the metal lockers as they ring out. It's my moment to check in before heading home. So I pause for a moment and press my palm of the hand against the cool metal door frame of my locker. I'm not warm. It's not a particularly hot day out, but there is something comforting about slowing down. I don't have far to walk home. And honestly, I can take fairly fast strides once I get going. So this is really just my own form of mindfulness. As my fingertips run over the edges of the metal vent, I'm startled by a ball of energy coming towards me. Life has trained me well, and already I'm planning my exit strategies, because I can't even begin to imagine what you want with me so late after school. Your wiry hair is askew and as offering testimony to how much of a hurry you just came in through the doors. You angle yourself over to get past me and open your locker. It's already making me uncomfortable, this change in routine and your presence here foreboding something in the air. The air outside my open by the open thoroughfare is springtime cool, with just the right amount of heat in it to allow me to picture the sunshine beyond. The only positive thing this area has going for it is the space outside the work woodwork rooms, none of which even begins to hint at why you're here now. You look excited, giddy even, and start to hurriedly toss books in your bag. Then, just as you said it, so I guess you may have heard that I'm gay by now. I happened, and suddenly I found myself feeling as if a thousand eyes were on me, because how could you know that about me? I mean, you had to, right? Because outside of team rom-coms, no one come, walks up to someone and announces something like that. There wasn't enough time to scan your face and weigh up how legit or sincere you were being right there and then. So I politely, 
although a little coldly, congratulated you. I slowly cooled down. My cheeks flushed, flushed when I got outside and realized that no one else was around. You had just come out to me and me alone. So if this was some trick to get me out my, myself or to out myself, it was bizarrely mismanaged. I managed to keep myself together and get through my homework. Though I can't say for sure that I didn't stop searching for meaning in your words throughout my German conjugations. Did you mean to ask me if I was gay too? Or was it simply you coming out and accidentally coming out to another gay guy? I mean, what was the goal? We didn't know each other, not really. The next day I took my time to absorb you more. You hadn't broken any more rules about when and where to show up. So I couldn't chastise you over that, not even in my head. The first few classes passed by without much to comment on. I vaguely recalled Mr. Tully calling me, calling out for quiet across the mezzanine. Though as Matt's class ended, I found myself at the locker as per usual. You showed up, not on my time, your own as I would later come to expect of you. It was even clearer now as some of your friends, all girls, shuffled on by the lockers. The looks one gave me as if daring me to be homophobic. I don't know about being homophobic, but I remember wondering how for two days straight you could feel comfortable coming in with school shirt all disheveled and cuffs off the jumper tattered and by remarks on the tips of your fingers. Honestly, this was not how I imagined meeting my, my first gay. Well, other than myself. I took the risk and shared you, with you why I didn't have a problem with you being gay. Because I'm, I like guys too. I picked up my own school jumper now, fixing it so that it took on some sort of shape that occupied the silence in the room. I remember being in awe of how swiftly and masterfully you'd managed arranged for me to come over to yours that weekend. I hadn't a clue how I'd explain an unexpected friendship to my parents, but somehow it worked out. I was over at yours that Saturday. When it comes to you and I, I find it telling that nothing gets named as we sort of exist in the space that between everything else. That first day together away from school or anything else had us slipping away from your mom's house and by some trees for cover. We kissed and I immediately noticed how full your lips are and how soft your skin is. I like kissing boys, I think to myself. Claiming the adjacent tree line as ours sort of helps me to relax, like I'm not polluting your mom's house. We do kiss again. After dinner in your house, away from your mum, but it's the type of kiss that is fleeting, as if it is hurrying down the path to meet you later. Each kiss is an experiment, and so I wonder if this is what is meant by when writers write about their first kiss lingering. I think my second one just started to run a marathon. There's a silly, stupid grin on your face. You've actually said yes, yes to sleeping with, with you and feeling another guy close to me. I was thinking of your soft lips and smooth face when I said yes. I've been surprised at those sensations and how I was curious about more. That night I felt a sharpness enter me and a gritting stubbornness to push on through, grab the mattress. You pulled in deeper and it hurts. I did not feel sexy. It was all very mechanical in the end. Do you want to be boyfriends? You asked coyly afterwards. My stomach turned. I could sense there was a unique vulnerability here. The sex was something others had seen of you, but this part, asking me to be your boyfriend was new to you too. I didn't feel the same way. I don't think that's a good idea, I said tentatively. Whose feelings I was trying to protect, I have no idea. We only agreed to try out sex and see what it would be like and to do, 
I do like trying things with you, but I think we should stay friends. I could have kicked myself for being so much of a cliche. I wasn't ruffling with my jumper now. I wasn't innocent anymore. I wasn't your first and you'd clearly been with others. It felt the need to hide this from me. We hadn't used a condom. You said I was your first and I wanted to believe you. Perhaps I was your first without a condom, but now I felt like I'd been picked up by a strong gust of wind and plonked directly in the way of rampaging lorries on the motorway. I lied just now. I'm not sure I want to be friends, but I'm realizing my biggest mistake was confusing sex and friendship here. I'd never had friends before, at least not long-term ones. Over the next few months, behind everyone's backs, we fool around. It's too late though. The damage is done and now I'm convinced I'm rubbish at sex and that it should always hurt getting fucked. With each trust, something's building inside of me and I'm so desperate not to rock the boat. And also who else can that ask? You and I are the only ones occupying this strange non-boyfriend space. Trapped by the named and unnamed, I'm guessing you feel it too. You are grinning to yourself, and it is always to yourself, even though you are surrounded by people. You draw your cigarette in a circular motion around in the air. Every action is methodical and pronounced as you draw the cigarette to your pursed lips. Still somehow maintain that impish smile reflecting your eyes. To be fair to you, your eyes do sparkle and hold this innate ability to draw people in. So it comes as little surprise to me when I realize that you will probably distance these people from, from you just as you have with me and most likely others before me. Do you even know how imminent this outcome will be? Your hand with its lit cigarette manipulates the space around you like the conductor of an orchestra. Aloof yet in control, ever present, but not connected. Grotesquely intimately present, but not connected, as the case may be with you. You're not a good maestro. This is a performance, a pageantry for the spectators and voyeurs around you. Your arm is drawing folks in as we speak. I am so angry with you because you must understand how much this keeps me from you. After everything, my anger knots in my stomach, filled with things I should have said and wanted to say to you. In this situation, I want you to stop and ground yourself with feet firmly planted on terra firma. Square your body to mine and look at me and see me in this crowd. In this situation, you should really let go of this armor of deflection you've created and understand I'm not asking you to be weak, to be present with me and not let the important things continue unsaid. In this situation, I need you to put away the prop in your hand that always appears to be a perpetually lit cigarette with its false promises of warmth and instead of drawing your words from the side of your mouth like some silhouette, you may find words that do not fly past me out of reach. In this situation, you were clearly practicing selective hearing. I can tell because you pull up away more overtly than you intend to, which shifts your gait as you now have to commit to gliding across the floor in a dance I can only describe as an homage to Gershwin's, an American in Paris, as though you've skipped into another world, like Lise Beauvoir waiting for Jerry Mulligan by the riverfront. The river nearby here is as old as can be, but it never really features as part of our love story. I don't ever want to feel used by you, though I'm another prop, as though I'm another prop in one of your episodic performances in life. Soon to be cast in a pile of spent stunt props forgotten between scenes. I'm not present in your story. I stubbornly resolve to maintain my distance as you continue conduct your friends to the correct staging. 
I make a note in my head and that I will be a statue, strong and resolute. Imagine you huff and puff around me. I'm going to cancel your bravado and gesticulations by becoming something else, something unexpected. The plan lacks a certain attention to detail, but I've been patient. I've been alone again, and I'm not sure why. I've seen you wandering to school groups, bouncing between friendship groups, as if what had transpired between us happened through some momentum of its own, moved us from the green margins of your house to the bed in your room. Like a statue, I take my stride and root myself firmly. Fix my gaze and wait to see if you take up your assigned role. Or will you stay fixed to this character you've cast yourself in and let the curtain roll down the backdrop to play out the same scenes you continue to maintain with your hands picked supporting cast and crew? I'm ready to play something new, even if you're not. I think I've been for a while, but anything else we must both find an ending to this scene. And just like that, you become a leaf caught in the first updraft of a flurry and soon followed by others. A series of leaves from discordant piles. I'm remo removed from the Murray dance now, no longer amid the murmurings of the troop bounding after you. So it's only now I really understand you move like this so as to never be caught and have to plant roots. I'm all about roots. There is an imagined exchange between someone else in school tells me about. She thinks this explains the obvious distance between us. It doesn't. We've not spoken in so long. I broke my resolve and moved speedily towards you before you can traipse like some eerie creature into the mist of people. He told her that we'd fallen out and that we were not friends. What happened when I confronted you? Your only defense was that you were sick of hearing of her interfering and asking questions. But she wasn't like this. You were. You deflect your own feelings in a masquerade of other speeches. You aren't looking at me in the eye and have angled away from me ready to flee at a moment's notice. I chose my moment because here you can't use a cigarette to direct proceedings. There's a faint shifting in my body weight as I reflect your edging away and I want to chastise myself for marrying you, but also angry enough to think on my next words carefully. Even so, why have you been avoiding me? I've tried to give you space, but now you're lying to her about us. I don't recall what you said next. Very little of what passes for conversation with you is verbal. It's always in the staging. I feel my group of friends drifting away, slipping one after another into the background. I'm losing them and now I'm caught here with you calling out in the busy hallway. There are too many people here and I don't know why choose to talk to me here. I want to tell you so much, but I can't think of what words will make you stop. I want to say, yes, she barged in asking about us and I had enough, but really you're worse. She hasn't, she doesn't know what she's do doing, but you always do. It's insufferable. There are so many people wandering around us and you are so focused on me. There's an intensity to your face now. And I don't think you know how it makes me feel. You stiffen your stance. At first, you're like some board, a carbon cutout. Then as I'm speaking, you make this strange flutter with your body. I want to leave this conversation. You take it and I can tell you're get angry with me. You're talking and I can tell you're angry with me. And perhaps you should be, but it was you that made the decision to not be boyfriends. You labor your words, friends, my friend this and that, and somehow I'm taking the blame, like I have been during all this silence. Yes, I lied, but at least the silence is over 
and there is only what is next. Thank you so much, Niall, for sharing that. Um, I'll just take you off the spotlight there. Uh, there we go. Okay, and finally, um, we have a piece from Sarah Fitzgerald. And I'm just going to spotlight Sarah, uh, even though I'm going to be reading it for her. So we can still see your lovely face, Sarah. So this is a piece which is called Fight, Fight, Fight. Um, let me just find it here. There it is. Okay. So just a moment. Okay. So here is Fight, Fight, Fight by Sarah Fitzgerald. Before they cut the cord, they shake their heads and say that having a child like that won't be easy and probably won't live very long anyway. Well, one must hope. Because heaven forbid this child is a drain on our resources. And if it survives, it faces a lifetime of pain and completing meaningless little courses, the kind that would never get you a job beyond stacking shelves in Aldi. He may never talk and never walk or go to school or get married, but those little voices inside your parents shout with all their might. You don't know what you're on about. We will fight, fight fight. You dodge the bullet of special education, thanks to your parents' begging and tears. You work and work to prove yourself much harder than your peers. You're told to ignore the insults, spastic, rehab, handicap. They don't know what they're saying, and it would be rude to fight back. Oh, aren't you an inspiration, they say, when you achieve enough points in your leaving cert to grant you the reprieve from languishing in a daycare centre. And instead, you're lucky enough to study in university just like you always dreamed. Suddenly, you're equal. It's too good to be true. And people are sitting up and listening to you. After all these years, they realise you have something of worth to say. You're finally taken seriously. Nothing can get in your way. Then, bam, you are spat back out and put back in your place. When you have third level education and fall, sorry, when you leave third level education and fall right on your face. What makes you feel so special and worthy of a job when you walk like an old drunk and dribble like a slob? College has given you notions that simply will not do. But don't worry, there's lots of job bridge courses for people just like you. But the niggling voice inside is saying, this simply isn't right. I want so much better. I will fight, fight, fight. And so I don the armour and pick up the heavy sword to follow in the footsteps of activists gone before, ignoring the voices of normies telling me that I'm an ingrate don't I know I would be dead but for the mercy of this state? But I don't feel their compassion, just a weight upon my heart. I just want to fix the world, but I don't know where to start. A world where I need not give notice to travel on a train. A world where I don't have to beg for my rights time and time again. 
and those who once paved the way for us are dying one by one. Dying, fighting a battle that they have never won. The workload is increasing and people start to look to me for little nuggets of wisdom. What shall we do? Will we ever see this so-called progress that's meant to be happening in Ireland right now? I can't answer. I don't know how. And I plaster on a smile and blog about something deep, knowing that they don't know I sometimes cry before I sleep. You can't show them your weakness. They'll feast on it like cake. So you simply be persistent until you wonder how much more you can take. You hope your messages are seeping through, although you never are quite sure. When people say they understand, then refuse to ramp a door you start to become repetitive, repeat, repeat, repeat. And suddenly you're that annoying crip that people cross the street to avoid. And you smile inside because in your heart you hope that it's getting harder to hide from the grim reality facing people in Ireland today. Sometimes it feels that we're getting nowhere and no one hears our plight. But we owe it to our children to stick up for what is right. And they might have to do the same, which should be to this country's shame. But in every single disabled person's name, we have no choice but to suck it up because Ireland's fucked it up and continue to fight, fight, fight. Thank you, Sarah, so much for sharing this piece. It's really a wonderful piece and thank you for letting me read it. It's a, a, a total delight. So I'm gonna try and ask everyone to unmute. Um, Let's see. Uh, there we go. Hello. Okay. Um, I will remove the spotlight from Sarah just so she doesn't feel like she's the only person in the room, even, well, if, she, even if she deserves that. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that's everybody now. So if we're all unmuted, let's have a massive round of applause for all of our readers today. Thank you so much. That is just fabulous and thank you so much. Now, let me just check. Do I need to ask anyone else to unmute? No. Oh, here we go. Sorry. There we go. Now, brilliant. So that is a sample of the work of our wonderful writing writers group, um, Web Spinners. And this is sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this is just a, a way of sharing some of our words, some of our experiences. Um, so does anybody have any comments or things they'd like to ask or would any of the writers like to say a bit more about their pieces? The floor is open. I talk for Ireland, so <laughs> that so would be good. Um, <laughs> no, it was, it was great because there was such a diversity of stories. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Great. Thank you, Pat. And thank you for, for kicking us off um, with your wonderful little piece. I really enjoyed it. And just such a lovely little vignette, you know, of um, how our different experiences impact on those funny parts of our lives. I love your strategy of just buying a sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> 
So anybody else? Mm. And I uh, I I as well, what what wanted to say that I enjoyed all the of, of the all of the pieces, but in but in particular, I really um, resonated with um, with uh, with uh, with Sarah's uh, 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 because sometimes I feel as a you know as a disabled person. Sometimes we like we like live the same lives or like non to say to say to say appearance, but like every 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 what what once in a while we're I feel like we're I feel like we're 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 ye we're yeah we're yanks that act to real are we and we and we have to ign uh, acknowledge the man behind the 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 the, 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 the curtain still uh, still oh 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 to speak and that can be the every the part but I just want to say that I I found that poem the area of lifting and I think it you know I think it's something we all need. Yeah, absolutely. The the call to action, I think, you know, and also just hearing that other people are having those experiences, um, just sort of remove some of that sense of isolation, you know. Um, and I, I found that with your piece as well, Ross, um, just that whole kind of rigmarole of fighting and you finally get that opportunity for getting this tiny amount of support and it's kind of thrown back in your face it, it's you know is quite a difficult piece in a lot of ways to hear yeah you yeah. know so i think yeah. there was a, a lot in that as well so yeah thanks or yeah pat did you want to say something yeah no it's it's about power ah p-o-w-e-r yes and that's, and that's the thing about every one of us regardless of of um regardless of being outside the outside the outside the street or outside the the diversity diversity is difficult mm. weird because yeah. most most families have diversity in them yeah in you're, yes areas. you're absolutely right i mean this is one of the conversations that that's happening at the moment about uh, racism in you know majority white countries the global majority is of non-white people and yes you know <laughs> that, so yeah so th there's more talk now about you know minoritized groups mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah if if we did all stick together then we're an absolute majority <laughs> but we yeah. don't have the power and that's the important thing is that dynamic yeah yep. so we just have a comment there yep. from sarah in the chat sarah says i'm so sorry i have to go my daughter needs me kiss 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 Oh, well, oh, thank right. you so much, Sarah, for being here. And listen, let's have another big round of applause for Sarah's amazing piece. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Woo! I'll just say we have another comment from Ross saying, no sweat, I loved your piece. Also, yeah. kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> We're a very loving group now. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the only, you know, sort of socially distant, safe way of, you know, sharing affection like that. So, you know, we've got to take it while we can. <laughs> we, can, you can we can talk behind each other's back. Um... <laughs> we are being recorded, Pat. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What, what I meant by that is we can go around the the, the, the stage or around the actual um the the um, not the TV but the the picture. You want to uh, hear from everybody? It told me. Yeah, is that what oh, you're no, suggesting? So. so. <laughs> no, no. I, I first of all the um <clears throat> it's about hiding behind the um talking talking behind each other's talk, talking behind people is the guy the, the business person that comes and say yes that's brilliant that's brilliant that's me yes he just sort of leave you there in terms of that that bus opportunity and oh it's great it's great it's great it's, yeah yeah, yeah. And so that's that's what i'm saying yeah, that, yeah. bye sarah <laughs> she's coming in for one last bit yeah 
So any other sort of comments or thoughts? Yeah. To be honest with you, what I found was like, especially in Ross's speech, you could see the interaction kind of, you know, uh, things left unsaid by Emma, mm. you know, when Mr. Elton was, was kind of talking and then using Emma's own talking points like against her almost. And it's like, yeah. oh, you know, it's like, oh, so you want to go to Italy? Well, do you know any Italian? And kind of total distraction. Let's talk over here, around, away from the subject of, of yeah. you know, oh, but then I have to break the bad news to you. I can't give you a PA to get, bring you to Italy. Yeah. But also, you... I can't give you a PA to leave your house. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like just the, the scale of the difference between, you know, the lives of her non-disabled peers and even Mr. Elton's own life. You know, I thought that was really well juxtaposed. You know, it's like all those things that the non-disabled take for granted. Yeah, and and I and uh, I uh, I don't know if like if if I may speak about it a bit more, like, but how how I how I came upon how I came upon that that. The idea for the piece is that I I had just gone through a phase where I had binge read all of Jane Austen's work. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm so, wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the and so the and so the. the and so, the, and so, the, and so that was where all of the, uh, all of the, all of the, the names come, came from. But I found, I found like, I found like what was really similar was that in her work, uh, the, the like lives of her characters are, are like dependent on men, like in the, in the same way that our lives are dependent and, and, and on, you know, non-disabled people. I am deeply ashamed to say I didn't catch that. <laughs> really? I know, you, I know. You, you of all people? I yeah. Am, uh, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I, 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 th I thought that I, I, th I, th I, th I, th I thought the reference to Oh, um, well, even it in way because because that's like directly from Emma. So. I know. Do you know what it is? It's that Emma is the the book I know the least yeah. out of all of them. You know, probably. Probably less than Mansfield Park, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that is the one I know the least. So, but oh no, I'm never going to live this down. <laughs> and now that you say it, that is such a brilliant, brilliant literary parallel. And you're absolutely right. This thing about dependent on parents, well, particularly men and fathers, but yes. also the way that, you know, Emma doesn't tell her own story. You know, it's her father who it's like you say, the men in her life or the non-disabled people, even though her father obviously has his own health issues, you know, um, they're the ones who are talking about her while she's sat in the room, you know, arranging yeah. things for her. And, yeah. and sorry, that's that's exactly what I was saying earlier on. Um, talking behind her. OK, yes, yes, yeah. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I'm never going to live that down. <laughs> Sorry, go, go ahead, Mary. It, it reminds me of the doctor's news when I was applying for the PA mm. years ago. I was just asked to to uh, place my finger on my nose and that was basically the examination and then I was banished into my own room while my father said this he was hoping 
Like when you juxtaposition that kind of physical d management of someone's you know, impairment or their condition or something like that, and then you know, Kathy, I just I was picking up on your two pieces and you know this sense of kind of having to name them and also I noticed you didn't actually give them proper nouns, but it, it felt like they be they became characters. It was the oh. neurological mind, yeah. you know, it was the neurological brain. These became characters that you seem to be having a discussion with, or like going. You know, it's the tangible versus the intangible mm -hmm. that I couldn't that I couldn't help but notice in coming through from different people tonight. Yeah, that's something mm -hmm. that um, Kia Brown writes about in her collection, um, which I've currently lost the name of. Um, if anyone else has written uh, read it, not if anyone else has written it, but anyway, she she talks about like her giving her CP a character and a name and feeling like you know it's this kind of companion that she's had for her whole life and you know feeling very protective of it and, and you know very kind of comforted by it being there um uh, after reading that i kind of was wondering or thinking or musing on you know how do we kind of carry our impairments or our sense of difference around with us and for some reason i was visualizing mine as like a cat that's sleeping on my chest you know and it's like okay so the cat is here and i can't actually move but then while it's here i get to you know cuddle and stroke and be dribbled on and purred on and all the rest of it so it was kind of an interesting thought experiment i suppose yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I know in training for success when we were doing the writing course we were asked to kind of imagine our uh you know, our, our conditions are epilepsy as particular animals. So like with my epilepsy being most active as myoclonic jerks at the time, I felt there were more nuisance. <laughs> I changed my attitude later on in life. I got a little bit more antsy. <laughs> but like at that time, it was just a, a more nuisance and everything else. And they were just kind of constantly in the way. I didn't realize how energetically I described them at the time. <laughs> and then it was years later when I realized how tiring they could be as well. Yeah. Like, well, now Energet I get it. Energetic. Energetic <laughs> epilepsy. Yes, energetic. Well, not that this, like the seizures themselves have a lot of energy, but they, they, they cost me a lot. Yeah. You know, it's it's like that sort of overexcited puppy who's just like, you know, I need your attention now. I need your attention now. I need your attention now. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's great to have them some other times, but sometimes you mm. just want them to shut up and go and lie down. Yeah, I um, I think I I uh, I like find that um, I have anxiety, so so sometimes like, I would be like thinking about something, and I just so I tend to you know describe my anxiety anxiety ideas as like how having to look after like an anxious. <laughs> Toddler that, that like that like just won't come down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I sort of describe that as well. You know, it's sort of reimagining the inner child as you know my inner grumpy toddler. You know, the 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 grumpy toddler who is like too tired to sleep and just won't stop screaming. So that's my inner child right there. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> It was, it was, it's a really, this whole process is really interesting as well because I had forgotten I had written this in 2017. Never got around to finishing it till recently, but uh, so, after, so, after, after I had Sorry, what? Uh, just no, a second, I, Pat. Um, no, I, I was going to say I didn't catch the last few sentences. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, Kathy, would you mind starting yeah, again? Please. Well, I was saying how it's an interesting process to be involved with our, our writing as well because I had written this in 2017 and I had forgot I had written it till recently. I came across it in my diaries and then after I had this 
after I wrote this piece, it was, you know, it was, I was writing to neurological stuff happening in my brain but without knowing what it actually was. And then I was diagnosed with a brain injury after that. Oh. So it, it was like I was really not only writing to it, but I was also recognizing it, you know, yeah. like I mentioned temporal twice. Mm, excellent. Oh, and um, and the, the dark cloud and all of that, but, you know, I had chronic migraines, <laughs> I had to be like, yeah. in a dark room with them. And and then I was getting these seizures as well without realizing it. And like Niall says, they're like, they're a different type of seizure, but there's still seizures. And it cost me, it would cost me so much in terms of energy that one day I had, I was in lying in the bed, writing the stuff in a, in a dark room with only like little light on to try and talk it out of myself to to recognize the difficulty i was having yeah 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 well done no that's that is interesting all right and um, you know given that uh our sort of ostensible topic for discussion is about how our creative processes can kind of not exactly help in our lives, but what role do they have in our lives? Mm -hmm. And, you know, definitely that thing, when you're struggling with something that's unnamed and unrecognized, you know, then yet yeah, to be able to write around it. Excellent. Is a way of getting hold of it and a way of understanding it. And yeah, we always know before the doctors do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If only they'd listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to thank. Sorry, what was that, Pat? No, I said you're not allowed to thank oh. until the doctor. Oh, you know, until, yeah. The doctor <laughs> yeah. will thank, thank for you. Yeah. Is Salta? Yes. Can be, I just, I, I've suddenly appeared on the screen. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Tim. Hello. 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 That was fantastic. All the pieces were stunning. Um, and maybe what, what you said just a moment ago about being able to write sorts out what your it doesn't fix the problem that we're dealing with but um, it gives you time to be with yourself and your mind putting something together and if you can do that that's what everybody wants to be able to do so I think that's splendid um, yeah. But I, I once again I just have to say the things I heard were fabulous. Each of you. It's just really, really powerful. Thank you very much. Oh, well thank you so much for coming along. Um, yeah. you know, it's it's great to be able to share some of this with, you know, people outside our group because I know how wonderful all of these writers are, you know, but it's great to be able to actually share that um with outsiders if you like. So thank you so much for, for being there for us and for giving us that attention and that time that's really really valuable so yeah and I'm hoping that some of our discussion will help you know people who aren't who don't think of themselves as writers yeah. to, to understand a bit about why it's important to us and why it's a part of our lives and something that we want to give our time and energy to so thank you so much for your comments um, just uh, on another kind of thing, but um, because I'm an egotistical kid, I would love to write something and, you know, can, what, what's, what's the procedure? Do I send it to you? Do I, what do I do? Um, well, we are going to be having uh, fortnightly writers groups um, starting back in January, uh, from the 11th of January. We'll be meeting every two weeks on at this time slot tuesday from 3 to 4 30 ish um so if you want to join us then you know drop me a line on email and i'll get some um specifics from you and right. add you to the group it's very much a group of peers you know we are all kind of writing something or have written something at some point um and we're just here to kind of support each other in that um give each other feedback on any writing that we're doing set ourselves little challenges um just to keep our writing practice going and have fun yeah. with it 
So by all means, drop me an email and I'll let you know the details of when we come back again. Thank you. That's great. I've just okay. thrown your email there into the oh, chat, Tim, yeah. if that helps as well. <laughs> Grand. Yeah. Well, ho hopefully everybody who, who got the link here also has access to my email address. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that's great. And that's that's job done as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> getting <laughs> someone else interested in, in writing and in, in joining us and, yes. you know. Uh, so a little picky thing. I'm just really yeah. thanks now for putting on the web spending contacts. But it just strikes me now, uh, starting back in January, mm -hmm. it's a bit like since I moved from Dublin up to Leitrim, people say, are you going up to Dublin? <laughs> <laughs> I think of it geographically, yeah? Uh, and they now did it there when he talked about back in January. Yep. Ahead. <laughs> so I'm kind of... I'll see you back in January. January. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's more that we are back together. Put it that way. We're back yeah. together in January. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm just going yeah. to throw my literary hat on. That's an ellipsis. But when we refer to du going up to Dublin, it's because we know our place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another, 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 sorry, just because it's ellipsis, another word which I adore is delepsis. Oh. It's worth is... looking up because its meaning is fabulous. For example, it's where part of a sentence does more than it should. So things make less sense. So, for example, a line like, um, I enclosed. I enclose details of the twins I gave birth to in this envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went yeah. very literal on that one. <laughs> go, look it up and pick up one. Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm so glad, I'm so glad to be here. Oh, um, that's great. Thank great. you very much, everybody. That was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I, the, the, um, Sitting here, reading, listening, just, um, it's like I've spent, uh, this time feels like a weekend reading short stories, which each one has been powerful and, 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 and uh, all consuming. Oh, no, yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That uh, You know, we are lapping up the praise here. It is absolute. <laughs> Ambrosia, <laughs> that'll keep us going. <laughs> so, um, just one last yep. win. Um, I would love, obviously, to continue with this, but this time, was I just not on any of the screens for most of the... Um, yeah, pro probably. It, it will depend on each person's settings as to whether you were on the screen, um, whether they were looking in gallery view. What I was doing was when each person was reading their piece, I uh, sort of spotlighted their video um, so yeah. that it would be at the top or, you know, that it would be the most visible one um, beside the text. Um, so, but then once I've asked everybody to unmute and come back together, then um, we have you on our screens now. Power. <laughs> okay. also have, we have a comment from the in the chat there from Mary saying thank you so much for allowing me to hear those great pieces of writing. Cheers to all. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you so much. No, it's it's a real treat to be able to share these pieces, yeah. and um, like I say, we have been recording this session, so it should be online and circulated by the ILMI, Independent Living Movement Ireland, as part of our celebrations for International Day of Disabled People, which is on the 3rd of December. But uh, obviously, we're here all year round. <laughs> we don't just have one day. We're disabled all year round. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody yes. to say that. Yeah, exactly. Happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so I'm aware that we're sort of over the the four thirty mark. Um, but does anyone else have something they'd like to say or to share or uh, anything else they'd like to discuss? No, I um, I uh, I uh, I uh, just want to thank you all um for.
for your time. I've been having a, I've been having a really hard week, and uh, there is uh, session has been a welcome to do, 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 distraction. From, so just that angst. Oh well, it's <laughs> one of the things that I found with these web spinning sessions is. I think we all find a lot of value in setting aside a block of time where it's just about writing, it's just about creativity, and you know the the rest of it can just wait until we're done with this. <laughs> so I think it's a it's a really valuable space to have from that perspective. Can I just say um, again? I'm thinking again that something I find terribly terribly useful is just finding a bit of time which is about you and what you're thinking about and writing it down whatever it is but it's doesn't um it's not prey to the, the distractions of life like oh god i've got to get out of here or like, where's my chair or whatever all this kind of stuff it puff 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 Sorry, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, no, it's, I, I love the idea of being able to switch off the boring life and look at my disability and think, well, so what? You've got to get, what can you do? And it's very, very positive. So again, <laughs> huge thank you. <laughs> Thanks again. Um, <laughs> if I could just say from my perspective, I mean, technically this is work for me. Like, um, you know, but it's always just a treat to spend time in the space to just focus on the, the creative and the, the writing and the the amazing people that make up the group. So it's one of those work things that doesn't feel a lot like work when I'm doing it. <laughs> and that's always a great sign. So thank you for doing that for me. It's a lot of nuisance that this COVID thing is happening. <laughs> I love the idea of us all meeting up in a pub. Uh, <laughs> but uh, oh well, mm. these things happen. Yes. So, um, well, are we going to go away now? Um, yeah, unless there's anything else that anyone um, is desperate to add into the mix. You don't have to be desperate. <laughs> she just knows us. That's yeah, the yeah. So oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> use of hyperbole there, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Go ahead, Mary. Thanks to COVID that we're all here in this space. It wasn't for COVID, we'd all be in our different counties until yep. uh, there were some protests on in the city center or something like that. Well, we've really gotten to know each other better. Yep. And this yeah. COVID pandemic, so it's a real positive for me. Yeah. To meet all of you. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the first funding that I got for running this group was a response to uh, the, the lockdown and about finding creative ways to link up online. And so, yeah, it's it's frankly fallen quite well for some of us, uh, certainly for me. I've never been busier than <laughs> since the first lockdown. And I've been able to actually get an awful lot of things done because it hasn't involved trying to leave my house. And as Ross's piece demonstrated, you know, getting PA support to leave your house, that's nearly impossible, you know. So this has been a big change, I think, for a lot of us and something that we can hang on to and build on. I know that there's still a concern that as, you know, if things start opening up again and everyone talks about going back to normal, and of course normal leaves us out of the picture entirely, you know. Um, so there is a concern that there'll be a perception that, oh, well, disabled people can go online now. So now that's accessibility solved. So there will be more fights to come, of course. 
but yeah let's build on this unexpected positive that has arisen out of it so thanks for reminding us of that mary um uh, this is absolutely nothing to do with anything but perhaps something can explain to me i'm looking at isolde and nell's screen and it says is on a rock on uh, and then, then, then I'm dead. But it says she, her after it. And now it says he, him, his. Yeah. What's that about? That's about uh, letting people know the pronouns that you prefer to be used for you because yeah. not everybody who looks female identifies as female, and not everybody who looks male identifies as male so it's about just letting people know that these are the pronouns that you use and it means that you don't have to keep on correcting people if they get it wrong i see thank you you're welcome yeah. and zoom is quite handy that if you go into the desktop space you can actually program it to have those in by default so you don't have to keep adding them in so yeah meetings yeah and that's and that's that yeah, it's great to have that Zoom is recognising that this is a function that people want as well, you know. OK, so listen, folks, you're all superstars, um, both presenters and audience alike. Um, you can't have one without the other. And it's just been an absolute treat and a real testament to everything that you are all doing all the time. We will be back as a writer's group from the 11th of January, which is a Tuesday uh, from 3 p.m. until 4.30 ish. And from there on, we'll be meeting every two weeks, every fortnight. So uh, if you need to get details from me or the link, Niall has put my email in the chat. It's isaldacarmodyarts at gmail.com. Um, and you should have that detail anyway from this event i just want to thank everybody for your contributions and have a wonderful midwinter break whatever that means for you and oh it's day two of hanukkah today so happy hanukkah oh. and i'll see you all in 2022 oh, yeah. <laughs> so, see, you next year. see you next year everybody yeah. Bye -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.